Well, about my day yesterday, I was listening to NPR. A story came on about hijab day at a local Boston high school and how it was canceled. It was intriguing simply because of how idiotic it is. Let us take a moment and listen. I will give commentary on the way. Don't have to worry about watching. The Islamic style of head covering called hijab has also stirred up some controversy not far from our studios here in Boston. The world's Matthew Bell has that story. The city of Medford, population about 57,000, is north of Boston. It's sort of where the city ends and the suburbs begin. It's also where I happen to live, and as someone who reports on religion, I was intrigued to hear that students at the local high school were going to take part in World Hijab Day. Are we really shocked that we have an area in the United States curious about diversity? It's a suburb. That must be important. Why else would he add that in? It's just to show you why we wear it, to make you feel the environment that we feel. And like when I walk in the halls, how I feel, how those people look at me. Sophia Chalabi is a ninth grader. She spent much of her life in Syria. She's never really experienced direct discrimination in... Never experienced direct discrimination. Isn't that lovely? So this is awareness. World Hijab Day is an awareness campaign to let people know that women choose to wear the hijab and that it's an expression of faith. They try to equate it to similar to a Jewish man wearing a yakima or a Christian wearing a cross. What, though, if this young woman refuses to wear her hijab? What is the consequence of that? I believe she is the one pictured on the right who we just heard speak. I'm sure that if she said, Father, I do not wish to wear the hijab, I do not like the way it feels, he probably will not go, yes, darling, that is fine, do whatever you like, you're in America. Given the fact that she grew up mostly in Syria, one can easily extrapolate that her father grew up even more so in Syria. And if we look at Syria now, with its Christian population almost wholly displaced or killed, and we continue to have a factional sectarian war taking place between Sunnis and Shia still, one can guess that the father, with his Muslim daughter is also a Muslim, and chances are will not take kindly to the idea of his daughter saying, no father, I don't want to wear the hijab. So what type of awareness are we actually raising here? What if she is found out to be like many other young Muslim girls in different parts of the world, or young Catholic girls in many cases, going to school dressed modestly only to have less modest clothing in their backpack, which they feel like and are more comfortable wearing. What if upon arriving at school, she removes her headscarf because she only wears it so she doesn't get in trouble at home? Is that the awareness campaign we're going for here? And the fact that she never experienced direct discrimination in Medford since coming from Syria is kind of strange of a point to bring up. Why do we need to bring awareness about something simply because someone's never experienced discrimination? That seems like a strange thing to be bringing to people's attention. Medford, she says. But there was a weird moment in school last fall during a moment of silence for the victims of the attacks in Paris. I remember when it was like around the Paris bombing, um, there were like people in my home were looking at me. I was like, really? Okay, like, why, why don't look at me? I, I'm not, I wasn't there. Charlie. Now, teenage humor aside, that is something that every high school student will experience. They will have a moment where they feel that all eyes are on them and they will fill in the gaps as to reasoning why. Even if it was entirely derived on the fact that, hey, Sophia is a Muslim and, you know, that was carried out by Muslims. I wonder if they're the same kind of Muslim. What if the super evangelical Christian in the class that doesn't shut up about Christ was there the same day we were hearing a moment of World Quran Burning Day? That evangelical pastor down in, I believe, Florida, who was going to burn Qurans. 
would people not look at the crazy evangelical there with a little bit of curiosity? Possibly. But these are teenagers we're talking about. It's not like they were staring daggers at her thinking, why did you do this? That is something that existed within this young girl's mind, which, as we've seen with many other elements of social justice and diversity movements, it's not about actual discrimination. It's not actual uh, words or actions taken against people. It's their personal perceptions of what they think people are thinking about them pretty baseless approach, if you ask me. Shelby is one of a handful of students at Medford High School who wears a headscarf to school. She's also part of the Arabic club. Some of its members are Muslims, but not all. So, the Arabic club. I can't help but think of the Gadfather in this case here, who is an Arab from Lebanon and is a Jew. So I wonder if the Arabic club supports some type of Jewish religious expression day. Or if they are just, well, you know, let's just, Muslims are a little more oppressed, so we should focus on just their needs. Early this semester, the club came up with the idea of taking part in World Hijab Day. It's an annual event to promote awareness and understanding of Muslim women who wear the headscarf as an expression of their faith. At Medford High, Students and teachers, too, would be invited to wear a headscarf for the day if they wanted to. After school, there would be an assembly to talk about it. John Perella is the headmaster at the high school. Before we get to Perella's comments, just consider what was said there. Now, this is an anti-theist video, nothing, not comedy, not social justice. This is about the theistic side of wearing a hijab. It's an expression of face. Uh, faith, sorry. It is entirely a talking point to continually hear that over and over and over again. It is not an expression of faith by personal choice. It is an expression of faith of oppression. A woman wearing a hijab can easily and immediately be identified as a Muslim, just as if someone wearing a cross will be identified as someone who is a Christian. The idea that there's a choice in the matter is frankly ironic that the school is saying, if you want to, because most of these women don't have a choice. And there's grave consequences for them failing to do so, refusing to do so. I think it's laughable that the school believes that there is nothing wrong with going ahead of this, something that Pirelli here is about to defend. So they were really organized. They were sincere and genuine um, and really sweet. You know, the, the whole idea of it was to really develop empathy and to um, give voice to, to a, a, a minority group in, in our building that does not typically have voice. Perella gave Hijab Day the green light. He announced it to faculty. The date was set. But then the trouble started. There was a... Oh no, trouble. To develop empathy. Okay, anyone who's listened or read Paul Bloom knows very well that empathy is not inherently good. When we try to pass it off as being good, we're not teaching empathy, we are teaching compassion. Actually, in many instances, which Paul Bloom is still developing his theories around and something I have probed with my own mind, the idea that empathy, teaching empathy is being actually a negative force in developing compassion. Because one who understands empathy deeply actually does very well to understand how to manipulate others. Empathy being that you can understand another person's emotional expressions. You can see how they're feeling based upon their tone, their facial expression, how they're moving, their posture, those kind of things. That is what empathy is. You can understand why someone is angry. You can understand why someone is sad. You've experienced a degree of that. Sympathy is just feeling bad on behalf of someone. Compassion is presenting goodness towards someone. Empathy is understanding what the emotional expression is that you are seeing. So by teaching empathy, you can actually do well to manipulate others. That was a digression, however. 
teaching empathy isn't always going to be good. And in this case here, this doesn't seem like an opportunity to teach empathy. This seems like leaping over the wall between church and state and imposing on others some type of religious talking point that diminishes one's skeptical faculties directed towards that particular religion. A wave of phone calls, emails, and social media posts. There was, there was a whole spectrum of responses, you know, from mildly concerned to, you know, um, people that completely got wrong. They, they missed the whole boat, what we were trying to do. Perella is being diplomatic. Some of the response was downright vitriolic. People accused the administration of allowing Muslims to proselytize in school, which Perella says was simply not the case. But do you have a national wear a cross day where you educate people as to why Christians have chosen a a torture device as a symbol for the individual who they say is their Lord and Savior? Do we have a day where everyone wears a yakima and has an understanding of what it's like to have a sense of something above you at all times? Do we have a Jewish mother expressing her endless disappointment with you day? Which I guess might be more of a personal matter, but it's a fact that we are looking at and one religious preference taking place here. That's exactly what's happening. We're having only Muslims showing off their religious faith to others. If someone's curious, why are we not teaching kids to ask the question? Why are we not having part of our education system a religious studies course where we objectively look at tenets of particular religions? Which does mean in many cases, at least in regards to Islam, why women wear hijabs? Why some women have to wear burqas? And why meat has to be prepared in a very particular, meticulous manner to be considered halal. Why is that not part of an education system? Because if you're allowing it to be taught as an objective fact about why particular practices exist, you allow an opportunity for people to reason out why particular individuals will adhere to that religion not having to rely upon the religious to show what they are, because they will always come to you in ingratiating tones to try and convince you that their religion is not as heinous as it appears. He says nearly all of the complaints were made anonymously. One resident did write an op-ed in the local paper. Isn't that depressing? that the anonymous complaints had to come in and people couldn't sign their names to it. Actually, the one person, this op-ed that is going to be discussed here, it was tagged D'Antonio, Mr. D'Antonio, I believe, Anthony D'Antonio, there he is, uh, did criticize it. But why would it come in anonymous? Why do we think it would come in anonymous? Because people in the community are going to fear retribution either social within their own circles or potentially outside of their circles by means of targeting their career for being labeled a bigot. Now that is an unacceptable state of affairs when we are having individuals being targeted or fear being targeted by the politically correct culture which exists when they express legitimate concern about their children in a school that has decided to favor one religion over another, even if they are just claiming it's about awareness and just why we have this expression of faith. He blamed political correctness, and he linked Hijab Day to outsiders who wish to destroy America, Amid the uproar, school officials decided to back off. Outsiders who wish to destroy America. Okay, well, that is hyperbole. We have, in this country, about six-ish million Muslims. Within the United States, of those six million Muslims, the vast and overwhelming majority, I think like 4.6 or 4.8 million, are of African descent. That's right black not arab so 
the Arab population in the United States has actually got a pretty good amount of Arab Christians living here. Gee, I wonder why Arab Christians and Jews would have fled out from Arab Muslim areas. Completely beyond me. Why aren't we having a day about Muslim perse persecution day? Not where they're the ones persecuted, but where they go around and threaten to subjugate or kill anyone who's not a Muslim. Hey, then we can learn a little bit more about Islam, right? They persuaded students to call off Hijab Day. 17-year-old Nayara Zerlatini was kind of stunned. I actually cried. <laughs> I actually I actually was in tears because um, I felt like we are already kind of in the 21st century, and I was kind of secretly hoping that people would be more tolerant. But we're already in current century. It's the current century, after all. Yes, and that is a good point. We are in the 21st century. We're at a time where we should no longer be tolerant of religions, that we should be throwing religion off of us. We should be walking away from it in even greater droves. How many more examples do we need coming out of the Middle East, out of Indonesia, out of large parts of Africa, where we have sectarian or religious-based violence? How many more Balkans do we need? How many more times do we need to see Muslims taking on Christians and Christians taking on Muslims and Muslims targeting Jews? The list is going to be endless, and I don't feel like looking up an endless list of sectarian violence. Just consider that Saudi Arabia loathes Iran. Why? You have Sunnis loathing Shias. Why? Why do we have this degree and what type of stability will we ever have in that region if we have Sunnis hating Shias? It's beyond me why people think that it's okay to still value religion as being some central happy force in their life and the frankly guiding light to their decisions. It is the 21st century, young woman, and it's time for you to walk away from your religion. So was superintendent of Medford Schools, Roy Belson. He liked the idea of students taking part in Hijab Day, too, but the whole fiasco reminded him that it really matters how you plan for an event like this. We have to respect the sensitivities of the community. We have to understand that there are people who aren't with us yet. Who people who aren't with us yet? Excuse me? No, there's people who aren't with you, period. It has nothing to do with a timeline of eventually coming around to tolerance. There's people like me out there who is a self-proclaimed anti-theist and thinks the idea of religion anywhere near schools is utterly atrocious. It should be kept further away from schools than it is from politics, which is an unfortunate barrier that has eroded too much in recent years. As we can allow someone like Ted Cruz to even be considered for presidency is unfortunate state of affairs no I do not accept that I will ever come around to the idea of being tolerant of intolerance it will not happen and frankly the fact that I would never come around to that point is probably going to benefit more people than it is going to harm we don't understand these things yet and we can make our situation a lot worse if we don't take the time and work with them but for Belson this is personal he insists that students need to be allowed to express their religious identity, even in a public school. Belson is Jewish, and he grew up here in Medford, which is overwhelmingly Catholic and Protestant. And that wasn't always easy. I was walking down Lawrence Road to the temple, and I remember there was a boy who was in the school with me who called me some inappropriate names about using my religion, and then punched me. You know, he was a lot stronger than I was at the time, and I had a black eye, and I had also had a couple of other injuries that went with it. So, girl doesn't get World Hip Job Day cries, and that's going to be made the same as Jewish young man gets assaulted. Look, there's not a rash of inappropriate violence taking place in these schools against Muslims. You don't need to bring awareness about that all Muslims are not violent. It's okay. Don't worry about Muslims. They're not all violent. Even the paranoid individuals out there understand when approached on the topic that not everyone who adheres to a particular group will be identical 
well, other than social justice warriors, they're a whole other different kettle of fish to deal with. But you, by educating people on religious expression within Islam, you're not going to reduce any latent hate towards them. Because most of the people who loathe Islam already dislike it because of known facts about Islam. Period. It has nothing to do with a lack of empathy or a lack of tolerance. It most often involves reasoned understanding as to why we should be skeptical of claims by Islam and Islamic individuals on its place and role in society. Believe it or not, there was a police officer on the corner did nothing. Come on in, guys. Find a seat wherever you'd like. We should have a faculty member and a community member at each table. So we're going to... Something interesting is coming out of the controversy. Students from the Arabic club are taking part in public meetings to talk about religious diversity. High school senior Simon Ospenson says, in a way, Hijab Day was a success. It was unpleasant to have it shot down, and it was shocking, and it was brutal, in a sense. But I think the net impact has definitely been positive. Just because you have this dialogue with the, um, the city and the elements of the community, and also just the ability to say that, you know, we can get together and talk about this, and that it's not settled through other means and that there is a discussion in the first place. It's not clear if the Arabic club will try again with Hijab Day next year, but one thing that's come out of these discussions already is a plan at City Hall to host an iftar dinner one evening during the upcoming month of Ramadan. For The World, Matthew Bell, Medford. Mm, Foreign food. But is that not the best form of diversity? Cuisine? I think that you could probably get more out of culture if you were focusing merely on cuisine and not actual religion. But no, it is not brutal. Brutal is a term reserved for either metalheads or for truly horrendous and atrocious acts. Brutal is assaulting someone. Unfortunate is having a day you put some effort into planning cancelled. Religion should have no place in schools. We should not allow religion to be dictated in our schools. Why do we not have a World Burqa Day? Why? Because some groups of the Muslim community interpret the uh, pronouncements within the Hadith as being women's modesty should be merely covering their hair. What about the very large number of Muslims out there that believe with female modesty is living in a sack? And how about this? Why not... Show it for what it possibly could be. Why not make every girl in the school school put on a sack? And if they refuse, you beat them. Would that be a little more in line with some other religious, diverse traditions? Or should we allow individuals to just choose what they want and, oh, no, never mind, scratch that, because the hijab is a symbol of oppression within that culture. You cannot twist this around. I do not like hearing these blatant bullshit arguments that a woman guarding her modesty is actually empowering. Because if she was choosing to wear that, that's one thing. But when the choice has a degree of coercion involved in it, that being choosing not to result in physical assault, then that is not a choice. It is not a free choice. It is a choice made out of fear. And that is no true choice choice. World Hijab Day does nothing but brew controversy because it is made by individuals who believe that Islam is not this scary, terrible force that we should think it is. Oh, ignore all the sectarian violence that are taking overseas. The Muslims in the United States are all good. Well, all except for one or two. Oh, well, all except for those one or two and then the communities they have around them, which implicitly support them and do nothing to expose them to authorities when they are made aware of them uh, planning attacks on other human beings. Islam is not just about the one or two radicals that exist within it that are willing to do the violence. The problem that we have are communities, enclaves, that exist within the United States and within Europe and within all parts of the Western world where individuals who are the ones willing to pull the trigger are surrounded 
by individuals who agree with their motives and who are unwilling to intervene because they believe it a just and appropriate strategy. World Hijab Day? Why not make it World Burqa Day and see how many more people are willing to warm to the idea? I don't think you're going to have a nice happy story on PRI talking about, oh, it's kind of unfortunate that, that this Arab club at a local high school had to cancel its hijab day. They would be saying, can you believe there's a school in the United States, a place that has a strict separation of church and state, offering a burqa to all the girls to understand something? It would be viewed, if it was not done by the Arab club, as an act of religious motivated hatred. It would probably be considered a hate crime if even a joke campaign came out asking for World Burqa Day. There's not really much more to say about this topic now other than to continue to rail against the idiocy of how Islamic tradition manifests itself. But it's unfortunate to see that it has been directed towards children in a school this time with authority or authoritative support. If you ever have a child that is in a school where they are trying to pull this shit off, you must stand up for religious freedom. You can say, anyone who wants to wear a hijab, that's fine. Anyone who wants to celebrate their religion in their own personal way, that's fine. But a school should never sanction an event that has religious connotations to it. We should not be celebrating wearing hijabs and handing them out freely to everyone saying, now you have a sense of what it's like to wear a hijab and why people look at you that way. It has nothing to do with any honest point beyond teenage angst and religious proselytization. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.